We are talking with the Foreign Minister of the Republic of Lithuania, Linus Linkevichus. Welcome, Mr. Linkevichus. And you. I would like to start with uh, another event that is being prepared as we are talking. This is the upcoming Normandy 4 meeting. In Ukraine, you know, there is a lot of discussion about the so-called Steinmeier formula. Mm -hmm. What is your opinion about it? Do you think it might be a trap for Ukraine or it might be a way to peace? Very difficult to say. We need more details. Uh, and on the other hand, we don't know precisely what was agreed because in general terms, uh, we are talking about implementation of Minsk agreements uh, for a long time. There are some parts about elections, about special status for, for the region. Uh, but uh, we all understand, and that was, as I understand, reading of Ukrainian leadership that elections should be uh, hold, uh, uh, according to the Ukrainian law. And uh, it's important to leave foreign troops to leave. Also, also should be conditions for media, free media, uh, political parties. And I'm not sure if it's the same read reading on the other side. So it's just one of the uh, issues what I'd like to raise. And I, I don't know what was agreed. So in, in short, we would really commend everything, all efforts uh, in order to implement Minsk, in order to uh, reach peaceful solution, uh, but we need really more details. And at the, at the same time, we have to understand that it, anything what will be done shouldn't be done at the expense of the sovereignty of Ukraine. This is also an important factor, but I believe this is shared by, by, by many and by everybody, and uh, this is the truth. So I cannot just, uh, uh, so just positive assess what, what happened because I need more information. Mm -hmm. Do you expect there will be pressure, significant pressure on behalf of Germany and especially France during this Normandy 4 meeting, considering especially recent uh, President Macron's uh, initiative to uh, relaunch uh, relationship with Russia? I don't know if pressure will be applied, uh, how it could be done. It's not uh, not not efficient way to, to conduct uh, normal negotiations. So pressure is not uh, something which should be uh, used in my view. Uh, also, we should understand that suffering side is Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine is w conducting the, in, the, in the war situation. Ukraine is uh, undergoing the reform process, and this is really not uh, so easy uh, to reach a a any agreement under pressure. I hope it will not be the case. I believe uh, the encounter by itself is useful, uh, un un uh, unless it doesn't lead uh, anywhere, because uh, the context, for the context, uh, sometimes create impression of something like process, but it's not leading uh, anywhere. We, we have these precedents uh, many times ag uh, again, and I, I don't know how it will happen in this time. But in general, of course, uh, re-engagement, uh, contacts, uh, efforts uh, are commendable, but we can judge about the results only upon uh, realization on the ground. You know that Ukraine is now feeling like on the one hand, Ukrainians want peace, and we see in all the opinion polls that majority of Ukrainians, they do want peace, and many Ukrainians do support the initiatives of President Zelensky. On the other hand, there is a huge distrust towards Russia, and a huge distrust, distrust that Russia will fulfill its obligations. So even if Ukraine makes a first step, there is a huge distrust that Russia will follow suit and that it will respond in kind. So what do you think the European Union can do, how, what security guarantees it can give to Ukraine that Russia will be somehow held accountable and will fulfill its obligations. International mo monitoring is important. You're, you're right. When you have no trust, it's impossible to agree on anything. And e even if you agree, it's difficult to rely on any, any sort of implementation. So without international mediation or, or, or monitoring or, or whatever, it's impossible to do. How efficiently that, that will be done, it's another question. But no, no other way. And we have already a kind of stalemate. And uh, definitely the time is running and people are tired, I believe. They, of course, they would like to have this peaceful solution and this war is already too, too long and victims uh, too many. And, and this is really the reason. And also, as, as I said, economical situation not, not, so, not so good uh, in order to feel the difference. And, and this is all in all creates the tension and uh, new leadership uh, understands this responsibility, I, I believe. Uh, very important to mobilize all resources and really to implement what was promised. And uh, this is not only uh, external aggression, also fight with corruption was mentioned, right? People uh, probably will not uh, forgive if again there will be no results. It was uh, also s said during the elections recently. So we see uh, many, many challenges here. 
and uh, we see also our role, but not as the owners of the process, but as a, you know facilitators. And we, we would be happy to be as active as possible. I can mention you that uh, economically, for instance, I'm really happy to say that we will be hosting next uh, Ukrainian Reform Conference in Vilnius after London, Copenhagen, Toronto this year. This is also to the same, to, to pool resources, to improve, uh, uh, so to say, um, project management capabilities, uh, to, to make the process transparent and uh, without any corruption and uh, also, also without any other uh, obstacles which were uh, the case uh, in previous cases. This is not purely related with the security, but it related with the situation of the country. And, and we really should be proactive in this regard. Uh, and to do that nationally and also also collectively within the organization. So, um, uh, pressure coming back to your to your to your question will not help here, and we believe that Ukraine will be in a position to explain her position clearly, and uh, international committee will stand by. Mm. And now coming to a different topic, to the relations with the United States. You know now there is a scandal going on in the United States uh, about the alleged pressure of President Trump and President Zelensky for his political gain. And in Ukraine there are fears of losing bipartisan U.S. support, which has been u vital for Ukraine in all these years, especially since uh, the start of uh, uh, Russian aggression. Uh, do you think these fears are justified? No, this is messy situation, and definitely it's not not uh, quite embarrassing. Uh, on one hand, uh, not helpful, definitely, but I hope it will be sorted out. And I, I believe, I hope that bipartisan support of U.S. will be continued, uh, because we know the support in Congress. We know that uh, politicians uh, quite clearly standing, not just standing by, but uh, but also also supporting Ukraine. Same with regard to Europe. Uh, it's good lessons for the future to all, to those who participated in this story and those who not. <laughs> uh, but let's hope it will not change in general uh, the process and nature uh, we have now. Mm -hmm. Many people in Ukraine would disagree because they really see this as a huge damage to Ukraine-US relations and they say that instead Ukraine should turn to Europe more and Europe also should focus on Ukraine more, maybe stepping in and Feeling that void that might be created after U.S. maybe more reluctantly uh, approaches uh, Ukrainian relations with Ukraine. Well, this this doubts could be dismissed only by doing things, and uh, whether it's true or not, we will see quite soon. So I hope I hope it will be sorted out, as I said. Of course, there is some damage. Definitely, it's not helpful what happened, but we have to go on, and uh, that's the only way. And uh, from the 1st of November, there will be new leadership at the European Commission, the new high representative on the foreign policy. We heard his speech and it was quite encouraging for Ukrainians. It seemed much more firm than the previous high representative. Do you think there are, like, can Ukraine and other Eastern neighbors hope for more engagement with the EU, uh, with, with this uh, new leadership at the European Commission, the new high representative? Will there be like, m more support, more engagement with them? Oh, definitely it's important. Uh, I don't know what will happen in reality. I, uh, I believe it will not be worse, definitely. Whether it will be better or not, it depends on all of us, not only on this uh, supporting side, but also on the receiving side. So it's uh, up to us. It's not uh, given by default. Uh, but you're right. Uh, the changes, I believe, will be a new, new so to say, pre fresh, fresh blood. And uh, uh, I believe sufficient enthusiasm and uh, I, I believe we'll really continue in the same passion as we did so far, even maybe better because time is running and uh, time is not on our side, by the way. <laughs> so that's important to note. So let's hope for better. Mm -hmm. And my final question would be, what do you think are the main three security threats for the Eastern neighbors now? <laughs> three, you mean? <laughs> oh, difficult to count. Uh, instability, first of all. Also, also uh, ownership of people. People must feel the changes. If not, uh, they will be passive and will not support political leadership. And external assistance, fo focused and uh, motivated and really targeted, which is also not the case always, because we have a lot of uh, separate initiatives, but there's no cons consistent mechanism, what I would be my, my, my understanding and desire to make it really uh, working. So maybe that would be uh, just uh, at, at first gl glance <laughs> uh, the, the, way, the way ahead. <laughs>